I, I got interested in in Tut primarily because so many other people are interested in Tut. I wasn't tremendously interested in, in the story, but I did go to the exhibition or one of the exhibitions in New York, and then I went to an exhibition in uh, Fort Lauderdale. And, and I'm just stunned by the number of people, the enthusiasm that they have, the interest in history. So that really got me into it. The big question in my mind was, how do you tell a story in a fresh way? And there are three parts to the book. The first, I'm actually a character in the book, maybe 40 pages or so. And it's about how I researched it, how I worked with Marty DeGard, who's a historian, what went through my mind, why I uh, Marty and I decided that there was a murder mystery to be solved here, this murder of, of Tut, which is controversial, but a lot of people believe that he was murdered. The second part goes back and deals with Howard Carter, who discovered uh, the tomb of Tut, and, and he spent 30 or 40 years in Egypt um, sort of tilting at windmills, and then all of a sudden he made the, you know, one of the greatest finds in archaeological history. And the third piece goes all the way back to the time of King Tut. And uh, I think people will find this extremely interesting. I mean, it, most people know that you know, he, he, he took over Egypt as, as a kid and then was murdered at a very young age. But people don't know things like uh, he married a sister. He was tremendously in love with her, but he was supposed to have a male heir, and, and, and that couldn't happen. He didn't want to be untrue to, to, to this woman that he loved, and so he wouldn't do what a lot of the pharaohs had done, which is to take on lovers and, and, and produce uh, children in that fashion. It's a great murder mystery, and it's a love story, and there's just a lot of pieces that are, I, I think readers will find very interesting. I like fast-paced uh, stories. I, uh, I'm a little frustrated by a lot of nonfiction where the first chapter will, will really grab you, and then all of a sudden, you know, the, the second chapter, it's, you know, 80 years earlier, uh, the main character's aunt grew up in Tupelo, Mississippi or something, and I'm like, I don't want quite that much information. So what I wanted to do is to give people just enough information so that they would learn something about their period, but to do it in a very suspenseful way. And that's just the way I write, I write everything. And I think a lot more nonfiction could be written that way if people would just write for the readers instead of writing the way books were written 100 years ago. There are a lot. Uh, one of them that that's, um, has some interest to me is the Jimmy Hoffa disappearance, and, and we'll just have to see, you know, where, where the where the nonfiction, where my nonfiction career leads leads me.